In the previous unit, we saw how we can detect lane markings and how we can map them from image space into road, into the road plane, into bird's eye view space. However, detecting individual road or lane markings is not sufficient for steering a vehicle. What we have to do is we have to aggregate them into a single lane such that we, for example, can follow the center line. And that's what we're going to discuss in this unit on lane detection. In this unit, for the purpose of illustration, we're going to consider a very simple model, which is basically a linear road model. Of course, such a model does not apply everywhere, but it would apply, for example, to driving straight on a highway. So here's the model, the model for straight lanes. It is a geometric model and it models the highway scenario where the own lane is delimited on the left side, on the right side by lane markings respectively. The question is now, can we fit a single model for this entire lane, this area here? We start by specifying the parameters that we model. The first parameter, the first unknown that we model is the lane width. Depending on the road, we might have some prior knowledge about the lane width, but in general, the lane width can vary. So we have to estimate a, a single value for the lane width as well when we estimate the position within the lane. And we call that parameter B, and it's a positive real number. Okay. The next parameter is the lateral vehicle offset with respect to the center line, and we call that the lateral distance D lat. So here is the coordinate system of the road coordinate system. And here is the vehicle coordinate system in blue. And so we have D lat as this distance, the displacement between these two coordinate systems in horizontal direction or in lateral direction, orthogonal to the vehicle sideways. Similarly, we have the longitudinal position, which is this distance here. So this describe these two together, they describe the position of this coordinate system with respect to the road coordinate system. And then in addition, in this simple bird's eye view model, we also have the yaw angle of the vehicle similar to the yaw angle in the bicycle model that we have discussed, which we call also psi here, and which is a value between uh, minus pi and plus pi. So in this case here, Psi is relatively small. This means that the entire state that we want to estimate can be described by four variables. B, the lane width, the long and the lat, which are the position of the vehicle with respect to the road coordinate system and then the yaw angle psi of that vehicle. Okay. So now we want to estimate those parameters, the lane width and the pose of the vehicle by simply observing measurements from the lane markings. That's our goal. How can we do that? Let's first have a look at the transformations between the two coordinate systems. We have the road coordinate system in green and the vehicle coordinate system in blue. Based on the definitions on the previous slide, it is clear that we can map a point in vehicle coordinate systems. Let's say we consider this point on the lane marking with respect to the vehicle coordinate systems and we call that X vehicle and Y vehicle here in blue. We can transform that point into the road coordinate system 
such that it is represented with respect to the road coordinate system using the simple 2D rigid body transform, which is comprising a rotation matrix that's based simply on the yaw angle of the vehicle and the longitudinal and lateral displacement of that vehicle with respect to the road coordinate system. In other words, we multiply with a matrix and add a vector in order to get that point on the road from vehicle coordinate system to map that point into road coordinate system. Now, similarly, we can go the opposite direction. We can subtract that vector on the left side and we can uh, multiply with the inverse of that matrix, which has happened here. And so we can take a point in road coordinate system and map it into the vehicle coordinate system. And this is the equation here at the bottom. Now, um, in the road coordinate system, we, we can describe the location of the lane markings, right? So if we consider the road coordinate system, the lane markings are the lines that are shown here in red. And they are very simple to simply they are very simple to describe in road the road coordinate system. For example, the x coordinate is simply some real number, the path length in x direction, um, because these um, uh, lines are vertical, and the y coordinate is either plus b half or plus b half would be here, plus b half or minus b half. Right. So we have the lane width b, and so we go plus b half to arrive here and minus b half to arrive here. And this is the y coordinate. And then the x coordinate is simply a real number l, which we call the path length or the location along that path in x direction. Okay, So this is how we can describe any of the red points, which are the lane markings. Now we can take this definition here of the lane markings and plug that into the previous equation to transform them into the vehicle coordinate system. And this is what has happened here. It's the same matrix transformation as before, except that we replaced x road and y road with L and plus minus B half here. Now we have mapped the points, the lane marking points from the road coordinate system into the vehicle coordinate system. Okay. Now here, this is the equation repeated from the last slide. What we can now do with this equation is we, we have two equations here, effectively, right? And so we can, by mathematically rearranging them, basically what we do is we solve for L minus D long and then plug, because that appears on both sides, we plug it into the other equation. So we get a single equation where we eliminate L. And if we additionally assume that the heading angle Psi is close to zero, we end up with a very simple expression. Simply by eliminating L and assuming the heading angle to be small, we get the expression that Y vehicle equals minus the heading angle times X vehicle plus minus B half minus D lat. Now I'm not going to show the derivation here in the lecture for time reasons, but we're going to discuss this in more depth in the exercise. What is important to note now is that now we have a relationship between y and x in the vehicle coordinate system where we have the parameters that we want to estimate here in black. For example, the heading angle, the lane width and the lateral vehicle position with respect to the road coordinate system. Which means that we can now use observations to estimate those parameters Psi, B and D lat from observations X, Y. <clears throat> and that's what we do. This results in a simple regression problem 
that we can solve independently per frame if we have enough observation, if we have at least a few observations on the left and on the right lane marking. Given NL points on the left marking, which we call XIL and YIL, and given NR points on the right lane marking, which we call XJR and YJR, we solve the following minimization problem. We want to estimate the quantities B, D, LUT and Psi. And the star indicates that this is the solution already to the optimization problem. And the optimization problem simply tells us we, we want to minimize the sum of some squared error terms, where the squared error is simply measuring the squared distance between the um, the y coordinate of the measured lane markings in the vehicle coordinate system. I'm using the blue color here consistently in these slides to denote the vehicle coordinate system. So we're comparing the y coordinate of the lane markings in the vehicle coordinate system to the prediction by our model if we pass the x coordinate to our model. This is our model here, right? And we make a prediction for y through this model with the parameters psi, b, and d lat. And of course, we can do that both for the left and the right lane markings. And so we get two different error terms here. There may be different number of points detected on the left lane marking than detected on the right lane marking, but that's not a problem. Um, we just add these error terms, as many observations as we have. Now, as you can see, the we have a squared error term, and inside that error term, all the parameters appear linearly in that expression E. Psi, B, and D lat appear all linearly, which means that we have a closed form solution to this uh, linear least squares problem. And the solution is uh, specified here at the bottom. Um, and we get the solution, uh, we, we get then the solution B and D lat and Psi by solving this simple linear system. Right, so it's a, a standard least square system. <clears throat> so in summary, we what have we done? Or what do we have to do in order to estimate the lane? First, we have to detect the lane markings in the camera image and transform their position into the vehicle coordinate system, for example, using the inverse perspective mapping. And this was discussed in the previous unit. In this unit, we have then seen how we can take these uh, measurements in bird's eye view in the vehicle coordinate system and estimate the post parameters, in this case, B, D, LUT, and Psi. It's important to note, maybe you have realized, that the model parameter D long is not observable. It actually falls out of this equation. When we do this transformation here, when we do this elimination of L, then D long also vanishes. <clears throat> and so this means it's not observable. And in fact, if you think a little bit about it, um, you can realize yourself that this is true. And there is many D longs for which we could estimate the position, the rel relative position D lat and the heading angle such that the lane markings would project correctly into the image because we don't know the longitudinal position of the lane markings with respect to a global reference system, with respect to the road reference system, we just know that there is a lane marking. So D long is not observable. Therefore, in this simple model, um, here on the right, we have simply set D long to zero and estimated the vehicle position such that um, we assume D long is zero and only estimate D lat and B and the heading psi. <clears throat>